Hi, I'm Mike Cerrone with Mastermind Agent, and welcome to the referral mastermind call. This is where we talk about, about how to get more repeat and referrals from your friends, family, and past clients. If that's what you want, you're in the right place. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start up. And again, as folks uh, join us, uh, we'll bring them in. I'm going to go ahead and start on a topic here to get us going uh, on where I think you should be at this point in the year. That's uh, November 1st. Uh, 2022. And um, at this point, what you should be doing is a couple things. Number one, uh, you should be building out, you should start to build out your plan for next year, for 2023. Uh, that's what the top agents do. In the last two months of the year, they're going to build out their uh, marketing plan for their repeat and referral program for the upcoming year. And if you have any questions about that, be sure to ask today and we'll go ahead and try to get you some answers. Uh, on how that works and what kind of things you should have included, et cetera. Uh, but the big key is to start that now. Don't wait until January 1. Go ahead and get that going today. Uh, the other thing is uh, you should be reviewing your list. So a lot of people have a lot of more free time here at the end of the year. That's why you do these kind of things. You should be digging into your, uh, your past client and sphere of influence list, reviewing it, making sure that it's uh, accurate, uh, making sure that people that are on the list should be on the list. So is there anybody you need to add? Is there anyone you need to subtract? Is there anyone you need to uh, re-grade? Um, okay, so you've got your double A's, your A's, your B's, and your C's. Is there anyone that needs to move within those uh, qualifications? If they are, then now is the right time to go ahead and get that shifted uh, and get that set up for the upcoming year so you are prepared. Uh, so good. Now, what else I think that you should be doing as far as repeat and referrals right now? Yesterday was Halloween, and hopefully some of you had a Halloween costume contest or did something around that where you can reach out to your folks. If you did, be sure to let me know how that went. Now, I'm looking forward. Uh, Thanksgiving is coming up in a little over three weeks, and this is the opportunity. This is the time for you to get to prepare for doing some kind of thanks for your group. And the most popular and common one that the top agents do is a pie day giveaway. It is the most popular event by far uh, done by pretty much every top agent I've ever talked to uh, it, because it's inexpensive. It's fun. Uh, it's re very well known. It uh, spreads goodwill, not only through your network, but the network of your people because their families are coming together th for Thanksgiving. And when the pie shows up, that you just handed them for free. And they say, where'd that pie come from? And your name's going to come up. They're going to talk about you and you just spread your influence a little bit further. So it's a really awesome event. Uh, if people want to talk about that, we can talk about that on today's call. Uh, and again, we're going to open up in a little bit to see if there are any topics or issues that you would like us to speak about since this is an open mastermind session. Uh, so be sure to be thinking about that and the questions you want to address to the group. Uh, or the uh, challenges or even successes, please share your successes as well as par far as repeat and referral. I'm going to give you one other uh, concept that may be helpful uh, this time of year. <clears throat> the markets across the country and across the world have been slowing down. Uh, in my opinion, that's being caused by two things. Uh, most people know one of them. I'm going to mention two because sometimes we forget. Uh, one is seasonality. In most markets uh, in, a, in America and the uh, Northern Hemisphere, it tends to be that we go through the same cycle, seasonality. It's not always your market may be different, but most of us were kind of slower in the winter. Uh, there's transactions happening, by the way, very serious people. You should be connecting with them, but there's less volume, less number of closings happening during the winter. And then it shoots up in the spring. Uh, as far as number of contracts that are coming together, that's in my market, that's usually March and April. People usually think it's later, but that's, that's an important thing to remember. And we're going to come back to, uh, then it kind of slows down a little bit during the summer. Now it's still much higher in the summer than it was in the winter, but it's kind of slowing down. And then in my market, boom, it shoots up again in the early fall in September. And uh, I call those the uh, procrastinators. And then it uh, starts to come back down a little bit for the rest of the fall and then out through uh, the winter. So you kind of need to know the seasonality of your market 
And for most people, they're experiencing that seasonality right now where they're coming and going in the edge and ebb and the flow. So we're now in a lower part of the seasonality of the market. On top of that, we've had this uh, macro event, this macro event that's affecting everybody in the U.S. as well as the world, because all the central banks are doing the same thing, which is they're raising the interest rates to try to get inflation under control. And I know if you're going to the gas pump, you're going to the grocery store, you're going doing anything out there where you're buying something, you're feeling that inflation and it's getting a little out of hand. And uh, historically, it can get very troublesome and uh, really damage the value of the currency uh, as well as the economy if it's not kept under cap. So the uh, Federal Reserve and uh, again, central banks, other central banks around the world are trying to cap that down by raising interest rates, which slows the economy down, which slows inflation down. I'm telling you this because you may need to describe this to your clients as to what is happening out there. Well, these raising in the interest rates in the short term to help the long term economy work uh, is very painful. It's very painful because it's raising the cost of uh, any kind of debt. And most people have to buy a house with mortgage. Uh, even if you're buying with cash, you're being affected by this and the supply and demand issues. Or say, if you need to sell a property in order to buy a new, another one, your buyer most likely has a mortgage, again, in most markets. Um, and because of that, you need to kind of know what's happening there. Well, that's that macro event that's coming in. And I, I don't track it every day anymore. I used to do that every minute, but not, not anymore. Uh, and so I think you got rates around seven. They were about three at the beginning of the year for 30-year fixed. That's a 4% jump. It's, a, it's a over a double in the rate. And that 4% jump represents about a 40% reduction in the purchasing power of a buyer. So if your buyer could afford a $1 million mortgage at the beginning of the year, now they can only afford a $600,000 mortgage. And if that seems too high in your market or too low, you just adjust. So uh, let's say your average price is 500000 So um, if a buyer could, could do a $500,000 mortgage at the beginning of the year, now they got knocked down 40%. They can only do a $300,000 mortgage. So their purchasing power has been diminished. Uh, so they're not able to uh, operate uh, what they had dreamed for as far as a purchase price. Um, they, because of the higher interest rates and speculators have been pushed out of the market, which is pretty good, <laughs> okay, because that can make a, a market get very bubbly. Uh, but they they no longer see this big, you know, immediate make a money make money uh, over in overnight. Um, and so the nice thing is they're kind of moved out of the market. Uh, what it's going to do, though, in the short term is it's going to flatten prices, which it's done. And if it continues, it's going to reduce prices just because of supply and demand. How much and how far? I'm not sure. Nobody ever knows the extent of it, just like the Federal Reserve doesn't know the extent of their moves and how much it's going to affect things. They just know they have to make a move and push the hockey puck a different direction. You kind of think about it as a hockey puck on ice. You're pushing it. You're not sure how far it's going to go. Uh, it might slide further than you wanted or not far enough. If, and, but you got to get it going in the right direction. And that's kind of what the Fed's doing with the economy and what buyers and sellers have to do out there in the market. Hopefully some of those dialogues are helping you, uh, give you some something to talk about with your clients when you get out there and you meet with them uh, to work through this market. Okay, I'm gonna give you one final thing here and that is this. <clears throat> a lot of agents right now are gonna make a huge mistake and I don't want you to make that huge mistake. And that's this. They're seeing what's going on in the current market and they're miscalculating what's going on. They think the market is going to zero or it's crashing or something terrible is happening and they're ready to hop out of the market or just kind of hibernate and not do anything. That's a huge error. That is a massive mistake because of the first thing I talked about, which is seasonality. We're going into a lull. And if your market is like mine, that means by March and April next year, which is only five months away, it's going to be the high point of the market as far as buyers and sellers in the contracts. Okay, not just coming in the market, but contracts, uh, at least around here. You got to find out what your seasonality is. Look at when the most number of contracts occur. If you can't find that, look at closings and then you backtrack it 30, uh, 30 to 60 days for a number of contracts. In any event, since I know that's coming in March and April, my market, those people don't decide to get into the market in March and April. That's the air. 
They're making those decisions in January and February. In January and February, they say, hey, it's a new year, thinking about moving. We better reach out and call our agent, right? We better call our agent and say, hey, what's going on? We're thinking about making a move this year. This is what we're thinking. We're starting to get some information, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going to start out a little bit earlier. They're going to be searching online for new homes, right? Everybody wants to go to the new home. If they're a move up or move down and move across fire, you know, they already own a home. If they're renting, same thing. They're going to look for a new home. Everybody likes the excitement or the future. So make sure you've got your advertisements out there. And we're getting to the punchline, which is, if you want to be catching that wave early on next year, you need to be going out today to talk to those people, okay? And to go out today, you want to be going out over the next 60 days, over the next uh, two months, November and December, you want to be in front of and talking to your database of people. Uh, this is when these folks are going to be the most interested uh, excuse me, this, this is when you have the best opportunity to build the relationship with these folks so that you're in a uh, relationship with them when they wake up that morning in January or February and say, mm, it's time to move. And they think, huh, what do I do next? Oh, yeah, I need to call. And I'm looking at some names here. I need to call Wendy. I need to call Denise. I need to call Bill. You know, they're going to be thinking about what do I do next? And hopefully your name needs to be on their lips. It, it comes out the first thing they think of. And hopefully you have easy access for your information for them to call you or email you or text you or uh, instant message you or whatever they're, you're doing to touch them. Make sure you're in front of them. Anyway, that's my advice right now. Don't look at what's happening right now. Look at what's about to happen. Right. The old Wayne Gretzky, the famous hockey player who is amazing, used to have this uh, statement that he didn't go to where the hockey puck is on the ice. He went to where he believed the hockey puck was going. He wanted to be in front of the action. And you want to do the same thing right now. You want to uh, get into relationship with your past clients, your sphere of influence right now over the next 60 days. I and mean, this is all going to happen pretty quick. And then boom, in January and February, they're going to be making decisions about who they're going to be hiring for those contracts happening in March and April. You could have a phenomenal spring if you Put some blinders on about what everybody's talking about and you get into action right now. Uh, I'll give you one final little thing, and that is, you know, interest rates are 7%. Some people are freaking out if they haven't been in the industry a long time because they, they have always believed it was 3 or 4%. Uh, for most of my career, it was between 6 and 10. When I got in, it was 10% 30 years ago. And most of my business was done in the 7 to 9% range. Uh, and people buy and sell homes in that, that interest rate all the time. It's just people have to mentally adjust to the changes and then change their planning. So they got to emotionally adjust, and then they will logically start working through the issues and the challenges. So people are doing 2-1 buy-downs now. They're looking at arms as far as that gap. The gap needs to grow a little more between the adjustable rate and fixed rate, but they're going to start looking at arms. They're going to start looking at different ways to make this work, get into a property and get ready to refinance later. That's kind of the concept that we have before. It's going to be the concept we're going to have now. All right. So what I'm going to do at this point, uh, thank you for listening. I'm going to open this up and see if anybody has anything that they would like us to talk about, share or focus on. If you do, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question and we'll see if we can get you some answers. How's your uh, work going with your uh, past clients and your sphere of influence? Are you making reach outs? Are you talking to people? What's your favorite thing to do this time of year? Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, Wendy. I'm great. Thank you. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you, too. I haven't been here in a while, so I was glad to join you. Oh, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, I've just kind of started um, calling past clients just to kind of check up on them and see how they're doing, you know, not necessarily always talking about real estate, because I try to be a more friendly approach. And it, it does help because you do get leads from doing that. And I also always I'm the one that's always sending out a card 
because I'm on Facebook a lot and friends with them. So I see different things going on in their life. Like someone had a mother that just passed away. So I sent a sympathy card or different, you know, I don't put my business card in sympathy card because I think that's kind of tacky, but sure. um, I just kind of do some things like that. But I'm, I'm looking um, to try to, to figure out more things to do. I mean, I send postcards, the just listed, just sold. Um, I do some farms, you know, that's been pretty successful, but just some other things. I try to do a market analysis for some of my clients, but then it kind of gets overwhelming because I've been doing it for quite a while and it's hard to, because I'm a one man band, you know, so. (laughs) Right. Well, thank you for bringing that up and thank you for sharing your experiences. I think you're doing the right thing, by the way. Uh, let's get some clarity on that. When you're reaching out to people by phone, for instance, uh, or even text message, um, or even email, but it's more of the one-on-one personal contact, it's just fine to not talk about real estate and just be a friend, right? Just be there. And the way the reason that will work still for your business is that you should have marketing pieces that are going out also at the same time, right, or, or around that. So you're coming at different mediums and through okay. those marketing pieces, say, as I think you mentioned, a postcard or an email, depending on how you're reaching out or your social media posts, through those, you're making sure that people know that you're available to transact real estate. Uh, when you make those one-on-one reach outs, they can then be more personal. How are you doing? What's happening? You mentioned sympathy, uh, it could be excitement or sympathy, depending on what you've maybe seen in their Facebook, or you're just reaching out in general. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, those are great reach outs to do. The top agents that do really well with this try to make those kind of reach outs uh, quarterly, about four times a year, where they're maybe calling up on the phone. Uh, again, some of them actually do it by text first uh, to, uh, to initiate a phone call or even email if you're a little shyer but they still wanna make those more personal reach outs. Um, You were mentioning that you were trying to think of some ways to do other types of reach outs and we'll start brainstorming with the group on that. Uh, I'll give you a couple ideas real quick. Uh, We're coming up into January. So for your past clients, this is an awesome opportunity to send out their closing statement for the prior year. So their 2022 closing statement you send it out in January of 2023 uh, and you say, hey, you're going to need this for your tax preparer. I just want to make sure you had it. I want to, this to be ahead of the game. So I'm sending this out to you now. Um, I hope that this is helpful. And it's a great way to reach out. It's real estate related. It's right about you helping them uh, and helping them in the uh, process of real estate. They're going to tie your name and real estate together. I would drop a card in on that. Uh, especially if you have your picture on your card, you always want to put your face, your name and real estate together in their mind. So it's going up in that ranking. Um, The other thing to do is uh, you could start working out your annual plan. You mentioned you're doing some uh, postcards. Uh, That's excellent. You said you're doing just listed. I would recommend in the postcard area or social media posts, there's a these are, there's an idea, and then there's different mediums for you to send it out. And uh, all I recommend is you do a variety. Don't just use one uh, pipeline to them in case that gets cut off. So go by mail, go by email, go by social post, text, what, all these different ways to reach out to them. But the message that I think you should be sending out that is the most valuable to message is a testimonial. It's a proof of success. So like you're just sold, listed and just sold, that's right there in line with the proof of success. I like that a lot. Uh, in fact, you can even do, for instance, this upcoming quarter or even this right now or in the upcoming year, you could do a summary of, hey, here are all the things I did last year, right? Like if things are slow, just say, hey, here's a group of all the homes that I sold or a group of homes that I sold. Like you could put, if you're doing a lot of business, here are all the swimming pool homes I sold. That would be one card. Here's all the lakefront homes and here's all the mountain view homes. And here's all the, you know, you could kind of group them together if you have a lot. If you don't have many, you can still sprinkle them in. Uh, That's a great thing to do. But when it comes to 
and I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost done babbling. But when it comes to the most powerful thing you can do, it's the testimonial. So if you can get your people right now, it'd be a great time to do it since, since things are slow. Your past clients, you just helped in this last year, reach out to them and say, hey, uh, reaching out to you. And I, we had such a great time in our transaction. You remember that? Hopefully they're very positive and say, hey, do you mind if I get a testimonial from you so that I can share uh, these good uh, vibes with other people out there in the market to let them know that I work really hard. A lot of times people are willing to do that. And it's best if you can get it on video. If you can't, try to get it at least in writing. Uh, but if you can get it in video, it's so powerful because you can put that video message up on your website. You can put that video message into um, uh, links. You can put it on YouTube. You can put it into links that you send out and say your pre-listing package or your pre-buyer package. There is nothing more powerful than a testimonial, a heartfelt testimonial from one of your past clients who says, yep, Wendy is the best. And here's what Wendy did for me. The more realistic, the better. So when you, if you interview them, try to get them to tell you the whole story. You know, what happened next? And do you remember what happened after that? And why do you think this works so well? You, you might have to do some leading questions, but you want them to say, you know what? I didn't think I could buy a home. And Wendy came along and she showed me that there were some awesome programs out there. And now I'm living in my dream home. I can't believe I got out of that apartment. Or... Um, you know, I was trying to get my home sold and I wanted to buy another one and the market was really crazy and I didn't think I could work it out. But Wendy told me, hey, no problem. Let's just take this one step at a time. And she helped us list our home and we got a really amazing price for it, way more than we thought we would. And then she turned around and she helped us get into the property that we had always hoped we could get into right by the location we needed to be right next. You want the details, right? Right next to my daughter, or right next to my grandma or right next to the school I needed to be by, or it needed to be a one level because I'm now in a wheelchair. Whatever their story is, the more details, the better. And you could do nothing but that. Those testimonials will sell you more than any marketing you could do, any offer you can do, any... Yeah, <laughs> there's nothing better than the testimonial. I can't think of anything, any guarantee. There's nothing better than the testimonial it supports that you are the person to work with. Uh, that's why we look for those testimonials out on Amazon as an example. What do you think about that, Wendy? Um, I actually have a uh, Google, um, people can leave a testimonial for me on Google and I've been working on that. I've got like 65 star reviews and they all said something. Beautiful. But my question is, what do I do with those reviews? I mean, I know you can put it on your website, but yeah. you know, since I really don't have any video testimonials, what, what else could I do with those reviews? And then another question is sometimes I ask people and they really want to give it to me. And then they're like, yeah, I'll give it, you know, I've got your review. And then it's like a week or two goes by. And then I have to circle back with them and say, hey, did you write the review? You know, and then they do it. But I kind of sometimes feel like a nag. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know? um, yeah. As far as when the wind asked them for the uh, referral or the testimonial, the recommendation, the review, uh, the best time to ask that is when they're happiest. Okay, so whenever you see that they're happy with you, so it could be when they sign the listing, it could be when you got the contract, it could be when you negotiated an inspection. It doesn't have to be at the end. I want you to keep that in mind. And uh, and by the way, that when they're the happiest, then they're most likely to do it the quickest, right? That's why you're trying to get them at that emotional state. When when they go, oh, Wendy, you're the greatest. That's when you want to say, oh, you know what? That's awesome. Would you mind sharing that uh, on a testimonial? Because uh, I'm always trying to find other great people like you, and this will help me find other amazing people like you to work with. And um, I'm glad you're doing the reviews online. That's awesome. Uh, uh, things that you can do with those is that you can take those and you could, uh, as you said, you could put them on your website, but you could also print them out and use it in a marketing piece. You could print them out or rearrange them and put them into a social media post that you do. Right, you could do one at a time, three at a time. Or you could do a whole block of five hundred of them. I don't, however, you want to visualize it. Um, 
that's going to be powerful. If you can put a picture of the people with it, that's even better. So be sure to start getting pictures of these folks, you know, standing with the sold sign or standing with the sign or standing with you at the closing or standing in front of their new house or the house they sold. Pictures will help too. In the old days, we did a lot of text with pictures. Today, if you can get it, you want to do the video because you can take the video and screenshot. And now you got the picture already from the video. You can um, transcribe the video. Now you have the text from the video. That's why it's the highest medium you can get if you can get it. And But I understand if you don't have it, here's another idea. You could go back to the people who have already given you testimonials on those reviews on Google and reach back out to them and say, man, that is such an awesome review. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm building a database of video testimonials. Could I get you to just talk about your experience on video? If I set that up, would you be willing to take, you know, five or 10 minutes and do that for me? I'll do it with you. And then what you do is you set up like we're doing here on a Zoom and you can do a recording of the Zoom call and they're on video, you're on video, boom. If you don't have that, you can also do it where, um, uh, so you can do it there where you got them on video. You can also do it where, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there, Wendy, but you get the idea. You can go out to those Google reviews and you can ask them to go out and um, do a video testimonial for you. What do you think about that? Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Did any of these, uh, uh, did anybody else have any ideas for Wendy and uh, what Wendy could do in this upcoming year to stay in front of her people where she's trying to build out her uh, other ideas, alternative ideas for her um, uh, lead, uh, for reaching out to her past clients and sphere of influence. If you have any ideas, feel free to unmute yourself and let us know. Hey, Dave, go ahead. Okay, well, this is not a big idea, but it's just a um, simple idea, but something I think you have to do. And what I'm saying is uh, you've got to uh, get in a habit. I don't care how many people you're calling, whether it be 5, 10, 15, 20, but you got to do it every day, every well, at least five days a week, at least five days a week, and get in the habit. And because I, I find if... If you do, first off, it's habit forming, right? So it gets easier and easier to do. And if you don't do it, it makes you feel bad, right? It makes it because you're kind of cheating yourself in a way, right? So it's it's a psychological kind of thing, and and you know try to you know try to uh, listen to something positive, and you know maybe positive mental attitude book or something like that, right? But just that just to just to get it consistent consistent. I mean, it's not really important the results. It's just important that you do it, right? Right. You're exactly right, Dave. Uh, if you'll take the action, it will lead to the results that you want. And yeah. those reach out calls, I believe is what you were talking about. Those are uh, a wonderful leading indicator to your future success. Even yeah. if you only made one a day, people yeah. are like, well, what is one a day going to do? Well, all right. We just talked about that's five a week. That's 20 a month, and mm -hmm. that's 240 calls through the course of the year. Something's mm -hmm. going to pop out of that, right? So, right. Uh, and if you're calling, the, the higher the quality of the person you're calling, like you're calling out of your PCSOI, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say you, if you get, uh, if you talk to one person a day, you, if you then uh, talk to 20 people over the course of the month, that's going to result in a closing. So that's mm -hmm. another good number to keep in mind. Um, I like what you're saying to just get started in the track, yeah. right? Build that, uh, that muscle, that uh, habit. And, and psychologically, I mean, sometimes you feel like you're wasting your time because nobody answered the phone. You know, sometimes I'm phone, you know, the phones are disconnected, whatever. But the point is, if you didn't make that call, the chance there's zero, right? Exactly. Make that call, yeah. maybe there's, you know, maybe two to five or ten percent chance that it might get into something eventually. But if you don't make the calls a hundred percent, it won't get into anything. <laughs> it ain't they're not gonna call you. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're one hundred percent correct on that. I cannot disagree with that statement. Um, mm -hmm. When you call up and you get a voicemail, do you leave a message? Uh, I used to not, but now I do because there's too many. 
people that don't answer the phone. So I just want to have that touch. I don't care if they listen to voicemail. At least they, at least I left something, right? At least sure. it's, uh, yeah. Let yeah, me ask people, you a question. On your mm -hmm. cell phone, do you ever get voice messages? Um, do people leave messages for you on your cell phone? Sometimes. Maybe. And when they do, does your phone transcribe that so you can read it kind of as the text? Oh, uh, that's too technical for me. <laughs> yeah, mine will do that. I just, I'm just i okay. letting you know that if somebody leaves me a voicemail on my phone, my cell okay. phone, my message, the, the system that I have will okay. transcribe it and oh, okay. I can read what they have said to me without actually having to listen to it. But I can oh, see, I, see. It. I can see it well, says, hey, this is Dave Brown. And he gets going down the message about what you said. Yeah. I can just read it real quick. So my point is, yeah, go ahead and do the touch. Leave the voice message because okay. either they could hear it, they could see it on the caller ID, and right. or they could even see it transcribed. And just right. I do that real fast. I don't even listen to them anymore. I just kind of read the transcription. Yes. Boom, it's there. Either way, you've made the touch. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And it's you're right. Consistent, persistent. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Do you have something to add? Yeah. I do. I'm cool. so excited. Hey, Kim, Thanks for having me. I I'm sorry. I just got, I just saw the email and I was like, oh, let me see if they're still on. So <laughs> I have a little bit of a cold, so don't mind my rough voice here, but uh, video text. So is great. Like, especially if you don't have a lot of time or, you know, and, and you don't really want to talk to them, maybe you can just send them a quick video and say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I hope everything's great. You know, and, and they love that. And I get more responses from the video text than anything. That is awesome. That yeah. is awesome. So tell us, tell us how you're doing that. Tell Dave and I and Moise <laughs> what you're talking about. You're you're flipping your phone around and you're doing a little recording of you talking to them for yeah, how it's long, like doing what it's, are you saying, how do you send it? Give us some details. It depends on what what I'm doing. If I'm following up with you know, my sphere, you know, you're just, you know, saying, hey, I was just checking in to see how things are going. Let me know if you need anything, you know, that kind of thing. A typical voicemail that you leave, right? Um, if it's, say, say it's a seller you haven't met yet or a client you haven't met yet, this is a great way to get in front of them because they I don't like know that. you, right? They don't know you, especially if they're a referral or they're, they're a, you know, just a cold call. Uh, maybe it's a, an appointment service you have. Um, if they don't answer the phone, sometimes I'll just send them a video text and say, hey, you know, I'm Kim. I'm the agent assigned to assist you. I know you don't know me yet, but I'm looking forward to, get, you know, getting together and finding out how I can best help you. And um, they, well, usually they'll call me back. They're like, oh, that's Kim. That's real her. Okay, let's call her real quick. <laughs> you know, or at least they'll text me back. So um, it works. It does that work. so smart. That is really smart. Uh, and so it's just a quick message. You're doing on a phone video. You're sending it as a text. It's mm -hmm. getting out to them. They can pop it open and get a quick message. Oh, it's yeah. way better than just the text alone. They're and there's actually a text. Um, I don't remember what the app is. I haven't used it in a while because I actually haven't done those in a while. <laughs> sure, like there's a bomb bomb is one that people use. Yeah, there's one that's free though. And if I think of it or find it on my phone, I'll, I'll, pop in and text you what it is. Hey, that is fantastic. Dave, what do you think about that? Well, what a great uh, piece of advice. Thank you, Kim. Dave, have you done that? Have you done these video uh, text messages? I mean, I, 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 okay. I think it's a great idea. I just don't know how to do it. Like, I'm, I'm not a high tech kind of person, right? I have a hard time, like, okay, let me, let me just give you a, a quick background. When I, my first full year in real estate, somebody had a fax machine. I'm not a person, not a person, an office. It was, right. it was, it was space age, right? Yeah. And it was like, it was a waste of time too, right? Because you had to do everything face to face, right? Right. <laughs> you know, so I, I mean, I, I, I love, well, I like the technologies, the idea of it, but to get into it, it's a little bit more, you know, difficult and there's well, too Dave, much. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you, Dave. I'm yeah. going to challenge you to learn how to just take your cell phone, make a little 30 second video of uh -huh. yourself to talk, just do it to yourself first. Just do a little quick 30 second video practice like you were calling me or Kim or Wendy or one of your friends and just say, hey, you know, this is Dave over at ABC. And I just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. I hope, you, you know, these are great for like birthdays. This is where I heard it first come out. So, hey, I was just thinking about you on your birthday. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And I just want to know, you. I, I was thinking about you and anything from me. I, I was sure be sure to let me know. 
I have another. So the, the app that I've been using is Vidyard. Vidyard? And this is a great Vidyard. And it's free. Is that V-I-D? V-I-D-Y-A-R-D. Um, so like we used to do call nights and we get a list from our broker. He pulled lists of like, a zip code or, an, you know, a subdivision or whatever. And basically we'd have a list of phone numbers to see if they wanted to sell. These are potential sellers, right? So we'd just call them. If they didn't answer, I'd just send them the Vidyard video and I'd have one just, I'd just do one video and I'd just say, Hey, you know, are you interested in maybe, you know, I see you might be interested in maybe listing your home for sale, or maybe you're interested in getting a cash offer, right? Because we all have investors looking to pay cash. So maybe you have a cash offer that, you know, you'd like to entertain, you know, something like that. And um, just send it. I just sent if they didn't answer, I just send them the video. That is awesome. Thank I got you. one yeah. listing that way. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of call nights, but I got one listing. <laughs> and, you know, I love that idea. That is great. Um, yeah. So not only are you using it to communicate, you used it to make an offer. So you turned mm -hmm. it into a marketing piece, really, a one-on-one yeah. -on -one marketing piece, because I assume you're saying their name at the beginning, that's grabbing their attention, your face, you're the talking person. <coughs> you gave a little offer with a callback as the call to action. Smart. That's smart. Yeah. You said you even got business out of it. Yep. And thank you for the name of that. Again, it was Vidyard, D-I-D-Y-A-R-D. You say that's a Correct. free app that's yeah. kind of like the bomb bomb. Free app. Yep. Sending a, a video text message. Very cool. Wendy, have you ever done any of the video text messages that, that uh, <gasps> we're talking about here? No. I mean, I know I should be doing video, but I'm just, I don't know. I'm really shy about doing it. I mean, obviously, like, I don't even have my picture up as we're right. sitting here. Come on, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know I've got to do it. I know. Cause I see all these ideas and I'm always watching YouTube and all these influencers and all there's, there's all sorts of things to do, but it's just like getting me to like go on the camera. <laughs> well, well, you may just remember that, especially with your PCSOI, these are all your friends, your family, your past clients. They already know what you look like, sound like, uh, in fact, they want to see you, right? I mean, they they desire to see you and hear you and be part of your, uh, have you be part of their world and vice versa. So maybe that'll help a little bit on, on trying some of these. You might try one of video, these video calls as an experiment uh, to a spouse or a sibling or a best friend, just to try to get it out there, just to try to see how it flows and see if you could do it and pull it off and kind of birthday see what Birthday texts like are good too. Side. So Say your again. sphere, your sphere, birthday, send a little birthday video, send a little tech birthday text video. That's a good practice way to get, because these are people you already know, right? So, and they already know you, they already know what you look like. You need to say, hey, just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I'll we'll be having an awesome, awesome week. You know, have a great year, make it awesome, whatever, and just send. And they yeah. love that. It's way yeah. better than an email, right? You personalized it to them for their birthday. You thought yeah. them to send them a little video text. Maybe I could do that in conjunction with cards because I always send people birthday cards, wedding yeah. anniversary cards and all that. And people yeah. love getting them because people don't get cards anymore. And my, so my, uh, my partner does videos on Facebook. I'm like, I just don't like that. I just I don't I'm not big on that, you know, for great, but I messenger. <laughs> we were kind of losing you there, Kim. Sorry about that. Last maybe 60 seconds, I think we were losing you. It was a little staticky. All right. You were saying, uh, I think my husband's playing, my husband's homesick too. So he's playing his video game. So it's probably using oh. up all my internet. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> he's like, I'm sick. I'm going to play video games all day. I'm like, excellent. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> I was well, just saying, my, my partner does videos on Facebook, the birthday videos on Facebook. I don't really like oh, to right. do them. Yeah, you can do that through instant message. Yeah. 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 But she'll do them on Facebook, like, so everybody right. can see. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'll, I'll <laughs> send it through. I'm going to send it through Messenger or I'll send it through text. But. That's a great idea. And thank you for, for mentioning that. And in fact, uh, Wendy was asking earlier what she can add moving forward. 
One is the happy birthday message. You should. You yeah. said you're doing it by card. Just add another medium. Remember, you want to come at people with multiple mediums, especially with a wonderful message like a happy birthday, because that's a good emotional connection. And that's where all decisions are made anyway. So um, you could add this uh, video uh, text message. And uh, the other one is for your past clients, you can add the uh, uh, home anniversary uh, video text message, right? It's a great opportunity to reach out and say, um, hey, Dave, you know, I, I was good time with you. I was just thinking about you today because I don't know if you know this, but eight years ago, I helped you buy the home you're in right now. How is the house doing, right? It's a great way to connect. It's something that's only unique to you and that uh, a group, that person or that family. And um, the home anniversary is another awesome reason for reaching out and doing those video text messages. I've heard a lot of top folks doing that as well. Does that help, Wendy? Yes, thank you. You bet. And give it a shot. Just, just try it. Like I said, try somebody that's close to you that, that'll be give you a friendly feedback. So you're just kind of experimenting. Try it today. I challenge you. In fact, I challenge you and Dave to send a video text message to somebody today. Doesn't even have to be business. Just send it to a friend. Can you put it in the text, how to spell it? Sure, yeah, sure. Please. Let's do that. I believe this is correct. V-I-D, yard, and there. Does that look right, Kim? Vid yard? All right, cool. That's the That's free good. one. And then a lot of people do a paid one called Bomb Bomb. So these are services that, um, in fact, I should have wrote that in. Let me clarify that. Vidyard is free. And Bomb Bomb is paid. And Bomb Bomb initially started with an uh, email video. You send out a video by email to people. It was just a great way to track it. Like you could do this all on YouTube or some other way and send the link by either text or email. But this one has like a picture in it, kind of a thumbnail, uh, at least Bomb, Dom, Bomb does a thumbnail, they click on it and it gets them very interested. Kim, does uh, Vidyard also have that thumbnail that they can see the picture of the video when it comes across um, to I'm not, I couldn't yeah, say for sure. I, That's okay. I, I haven't used it in a while, honestly. I have been bad. I, I already you talked about this, Mike. I've checked out. So I'm just We're checking back, back in. in. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to get you back into emotion. Uh, That's right. That was good stuff, though, Kim. This is awesome. The Vidyard. Thank you for bringing that. Welcome. Um, I, hope I, I hope everybody will take some action on these. And uh, But I challenge you, if you haven't done it yet, today, send a video text to someone. And by the way, you can do this cheap, cheap way. You know, don't even need a program. You just turn the phone to you. You record on your phone a 30 second. You usually want to keep it short so the video is not too long as far as its size of the file. So maybe 30 seconds, no longer than a minute. And you just record a message just on your video recorder. Oh, it's on your phone. And then you do have to do the next step, mm -hmm. which is you have to then attach it to a text message. But you could do that right on your phone. It's very So easy this one was a video, the video title, I guess you can send it to him and it says free market analysis. I don't know, it's 29 seconds long. So that was the one that I sent to the list that we had. And I didn't send it to everybody. I would call them first. They didn't answer. Sometimes I'd leave a voicemail. Most times I didn't. I just sent the video. It was That's easier. Awesome. What yeah. a great idea. Um, so there we go. That's what we've got today. We're going to start wrapping up our call. Uh, I really appreciate everybody's participation today. Uh, Wendy, Dave, Kim, this was awesome. I uh, had a lot of fun there at the end with this new idea, uh, with this new program. I hadn't heard of Vidyard before, so I'm glad we got that out there. Uh, we're going to, we record these calls. So if you want to listen to any of it again, it's going to be on uh, Mastermind Agent Network. You go there. If you go to YouTube, Mastermind Agent Network, that's where we keep them. Uh, look for the uh, referral mastermind calls. And then uh, we also have it online. If you're part of Facebook's group, uh, then we have the referral uh, mastermind call group there. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. 
Uh, it was great to see you, and hopefully we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Take Thank care. Thank you. Have a productive week. Everybody. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>